welcome back to the channel and welcome to today's video. I've just dropped Georgia Foot Nursery, done my click and collect food shop from Aldi, which by the way, absolute winner. It charges you 4 dollars to do the click and collect, but it's so much cheaper than doing Tesco or anything like that. So done that. Weekly food shop under £70, which was absolutely perfect. Put all that away, gave Helly breakfast and stuff, and then look, she's just gone down for her nap. So I thought it was a really good opportunity for me to get dressed, a bit of makeup on, make myself feel nice today. Although I am already sweating, that's the thing in summer. I put makeup on, my literally my melt makeup just melts off. It's insane. Um, but I also had a package arrive from Halara, which I'm really excited about because as you guys know, I adore Halara. I wear stuff from there all of the time. Anything that I wear, like trousers wise, is pretty much always from Halara. And I'm really glad to say that they're actually sponsoring this portion of the video and they've given me my best ever discount code, which is 20SHAN, which gets you 20% off all full price items. It's honestly such a good discount and I'm gonna pop anything that I mentioned in this video down in the description box as well. I'm actually wearing these trousers today, which are my favourite trousers that I own. These are like a proper wide leg, really nice summery trouser. These are actually a little bit big for me, but I quite like that because you know, bloke friendly and all that. And I'm just, I'm just here for them. I absolutely love how these feel. I feel like these are perfect for summer, also springtime. Like I wear these in the spring with like Converse or something or Vans, and then in the summer I just pop on my Birkenstocks and I'm ready to go. I'm going on holiday as well, which I've got a few bits to take with me on holiday. I've also got them in a dark brown color. I've obviously got them in the black and I would be more than happy to get them in all the other colors because most of the Halara stuff comes in like 10 different colors, which is mwah, French kiss. Honestly, the sizing, the colors, there's, there's something for everyone in Halara. And I also grabbed myself another one of these tops. So it's got like a little bra cups in there. So you don't have to wear a bra, which, oh my God, in the summer, like, anything I can do to not wear a bra in the summer, I'm absolutely here for. Like I said, I've got this in loads of different colors already. So the black one that I've got is exactly like this with the cross tie at the back, which I think is just such a nice little detail. Really, really gorgeous. And then the other two that I've got are the white one and then the gray one as well. Again, I wear these all of the time in the summer. These ones don't have the crossbody at the back. So these ones, there's loads of different options. You've got loads of different colors with the cross back like this. Like I said, I've got the black and the khaki and then you've also got ones like this without the cross. It just depends on what you prefer. With these tops, the fabric is so thick and luxurious. Like genuinely, it's really, really nice. Plus they dry really quickly. So if you're gonna get wet or you're sweating in the summer, like I just find them, they're just perfect. They're really, really good. But the quality is next level. These ones have been through the wash a million times and they're still like perfect. I've had these for well over a year now. Okay, these next trousers for me, are next level gorgeous like i love these i wouldn't have normally gone for something so tight around the top but then they've got that really nice like straight leg slash flare and i just i'm actually a bit flabbergasted as to how much i like these these are definitely going straight into my suitcase i really love these ones i have a style of halara trousers that are similar to these but they're more casual those ones have like buttons down the front you would have seen me wearing them like a million times but these ones i'd say are more they're just smarter like i would either wear these to work or on an evening out or in the evening on holiday or that kind of thing i wouldn't necessarily wear these to soft play although like maybe you could maybe if i made them more casual with some like yeah with just some trainers rather than these sandals like they could definitely work I love them. They're like a legging material though. Like you wouldn't guess that these are like going out trousers. They're insanely comfortable. They do have pockets at the back as well, which is perfect. But again, the quality of these is next level. It's thick, but without it feeling warm, if that makes sense. Like they're, they're very breathable is what I'd say. Also, most of the Halara stuff goes from extra small all the way up to 3XL. So it, literally there's something for everyone. And the colors, are so good, there's so many colors, especially in these ones. These are actually marketed as work trousers, which I can totally see, but I would wear these like, I would definitely wear these to like shopping out or brunch with the girls or something like that. Like I definitely feel like you can, you can go different ways with it, like date night, something like that. I just, I really like these. Hold on, this is actually a little wild card for me. I've just popped this uh, top on over the top of these trousers. I'm not sure whether I would have it untucked like this or tuck it in at the front because I like, I, I really like this. 
I actually genuinely think I would wear this to work, um, like in an office or something, but I also, I could definitely see me wearing this, like, for a brunch, like a bit more of a, it is a little bit more formal, I'll give you that, but I don't know, I feel like I could probably get away with this. I could definitely wear this with a skirt, which I do also have, so I'm going to try that on as well, but I don't normally do colour, and I really like this, I still have that. Um, top one on underneath because I didn't want to go get a bra. And to be honest, Tara have actually surprised me with this because I find that they specialise in like the more leggings and gym wear and trousers. The tops are generally like more standard and more um, like, I don't know, just these kind of ones that I had like very basic and like really good basics. They also do really nice dressing ones, which is good. Okay, I've got to be honest, although this is sponsored by Halara, these are all my own opinions and I'm not sure about the skirt. I'm not sure about it. I don't know. I don't know if it's me. I think I like it and I think if I saw someone that suits this kind of thing wearing it, I think it's gorgeous. But I just don't know if I'm a flowy, long skirt kind of gal. I feel like I'm a maxi dress kind of gal, but as soon as it's a skirt, I feel a bit weird. Um, I don't know. I don't know about it. One thing that I would say is I do really like this slit and I really like that it also has like built in underwear here, which I just think if this is your thing, you're going to really appreciate it. I, I thought this would be like a really nice thing to wear like in the evenings again on holiday. I've got a massive bruise there, oh my gosh. Um, probably from soft play yesterday. But I just don't know, I just feel a little bit mumsy in it. Not 100% feeling it. Maybe I'll take off the top and see how it looks with the other top. Okay, that is definitely better. That's definitely better. I'm not sure though. What do you guys think? I'm not sold on it yet but i think i might be i feel like when you're in holiday mode you dress differently like i certainly do i dress completely differently to how i would at home i probably would wear this in the uk like where where would i wear this you know it's not really the climate for it but i could wear this i guess like of an evening with a bit of a tan get a bit of color on these legs <laughs> and then maybe i could uh, get away with it they also have so many colours of this and so many sizes so maybe it's the black maybe I've gone a little bit too safe because I've gone for black and like khaki and every single thing and it comes in loads of sizes and I know that this would suit some people more than others um but yeah what do you think let me know okay I've just put these on so I'll let these are definitely my favourite trousers these are very me you know when you just feel like yeah these fit me like a glove these make me feel comfortable, they make me feel like myself. I will wear these day in, day out in the summer. But I think I could also get away with wearing these in the spring and the autumn as well, like just with some trainers. I just put my Birkenstocks back on because this is what I live in in the summer with two young kids. I love an airy trouser. I like sometimes just having my legs away just because then I don't have to shave my legs. I don't have to worry about any of that. Plus also getting up and down, up and down with kids, picking them up, all that kind of stuff. I just really like having a wide leg trouser and these ones, I cannot fault them. They've got like belt loops if you wanted to add a little bit of something and dress them up with a heel, pop a little belt on, maybe put a cute little blazer over the top. These have the potential to be both of those things. I am a casual girl at heart. This is why I find dressing up harder. But yeah, a casual girl, definitely. These are like a beautiful little waffle knit as well. Like they are stunning and this color, I love it. It's like a little bit different to a khaki. It's more of an olive, I'd say. But they have these in a million different colours. <laughs> Same as always with Panara. Like I said, they always have loads of colours and loads of different sizes. I just, I really love these. These are 100% my favourite. Look how they fall. I also know that you're not going to have to iron these because of the way they fall, which is a winner in my book. These are the ones. I got these ones in a size small. Actually, everything that I got everything that I got was in a size small this time. Um, I've been like tinkering on the edges of like being a medium and a small. I think I'm a small now. Everything that I've put on so far fits, which is good. Um, and I've also got everything in a length, a regular length. Before I have got things in a petite, I definitely wouldn't go long. I'm five foot three. Um, so yeah, I'm gone regular, but they do, if you are looking for something that's not gonna drag a little bit, these ones do a tiny bit. I kind of like it, is that really weird? Um, so yeah, if you are five foot three like me, maybe a petite size would be better. Um, but yeah, I love these, yay. Okay, then I've got the two more dressy bits that I was thinking for holiday, in the evenings, I need you advice because this is not my forte, but I have to say I do really like this one. It's a black jumpsuit, but I just 
feel so comfortable in it. I love the back. I feel like of an evening, just pop my hair up like that. There's plenty of space for like, you know, a good meal in there and some cocktails. I feel very, very comfortable and it's gonna be really nice and airy because it is obviously gonna be hot in the evening still. I've got pockets, pockets, um, which is a win. And I don't have to wear a bra with this one either because there's a little bit of support in there, which is perfect. Oh my gosh, I love this. I reckon with a little bit of gold jewelry, like I've just got these very, very small heels on, just something like that. I, I would absolutely love this in the evenings. In terms of the material, the top part is more of a scuba kind of material and the bottom is more, more of a like crepe, like it's much more lightweight and airy. So you can sort of, you know, you get the breeze through your legs like that. I just, I just really like this. Again, it's something I feel comfortable in. I know that I will wear it and feel good. Yeah, I love this. I love this a lot. Oh my God. I saved the best till last. I'm obsessed with this one. This one, look, guys, just, I love this. I, I'm so shocked at how much I love this. I feel so comfortable. The stretch on it. I mean, the stretch on everything at Halara is insane, but the material, like the fabric, this isn't something that you'd get like on the other online sort of fast fashion places. Like this is, the quality is really, really good at Halara and this is exactly that. It's actually really good quality and a really fair price for the quality. I'm, I'm just so happy with this. Again, sizing, they've got you, and colour-wise, you can get this in any colour. I really love this colour though. This is like a, the perfect car key for me. I'm very, very happy. Thank you so much, Halara. Again, if you wanted to use my discount code, it's 20SHAN, and it gets you 20% off all full price items, which is such a good code. Definitely highly recommend just having a little browse on there because they've got some really good stuff. Anything from like fitness, gym wear, leggings. I've got loads of those leggings. Lots of the trousers I adore. The wide leg trousers, I love the flares, but I also apparently love the dresses. Like there's there's just so much on there. So go and check it out and thank you again, Lara. Oh, I'm so hot now. I'm gonna put my comfies back on and get out of the dress. <laughs> okay, now I'm back in my comfies. I need to sort sort this out. I've got lots of washing and then all the clothes I just tried on to put away into the wardrobe. I also really need to go through my stuff and declutter a little bit because a lot of my stuff from last year doesn't fit me anymore. And it's just, ugh, it's just one of them. When you're postpartum and your body changes so frequently, I feel like over the last four years, all I've done is buy different clothes in different sizes and then thrown out other clothes. And then just for a year or a year and a half later for those clothes that would have actually fit me. Like it's just, it's just annoying being a woman sometimes because everything fluctuates so much. Does anyone else? feel me on that this time i think instead of like discarding things and like maybe selling them on vintage just quite as quickly i might just keep some stuff in some different sizes under the bed because i have a few like honestly i've gone from like a 14 a 12 a 10 to an 8 and then all the way back through it again and back um so <laughs> i'm just oh it's just a lot and it's just really frustrating when none of your clothes fit you and it feels like you only just bought new clothes but now I know that I've got a good selection of clothes for my holiday and for summer. I'm 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 like in the area of a 10 and an 8 now, whereas a few months ago I was more of a 10 and a 12. And then a few months before that I was more of a larger 12, I'd say. Like 12 sort of fit me, but not jeans or anything like that. So it was just, you know what it's like postpartum, guys. It's just, it's just a wild ride. It's been a while, haven't talked since your life You've been on my mind, don't hang up I know it's been some time, since I called you mine You've been on my mind, don't hang up Baby, I'm a little bit jealous Okay, I'm gonna make honey Some little oat banana pancakes I'm also gonna shove in a little pouch as well because it's got banana but apple raspberry and strawberry in it no added sugar and all that it's just the little ones they do in Lidl I think um so I'm gonna do that I'm gonna do a big batch of them because I haven't got a lot of stuff in the freezer for her I've got like some savory stuff but not some sweet stuff she prefers the sweet stuff like less for real 
These are like the easiest things ever. I do. I used to do these a lot more often than I do now, but that's just timing, to be honest. So I'm gonna do it now while she's napping. It's 12 o'clock, so she's gonna get up anytime now. Um, hopefully if I get a head start. Mash up my banana, add in all of the different things. I'm literally gonna put in some oats and then some eggs with the puree and the banana, mash it all together. I might put in some um, baking powder as well, just so that they rise a little bit in the pan. Um, and then I'm gonna give her a couple for lunchtime and then pop the rest in a Ziploc bag and put them in the freezer. So while I wait for that pan to heat up, I thought I could update you a little bit on the whole thing I dropped last week about potentially moving into a new build. <laughs> so basically, obviously I'd come back, if you hadn't seen, I came back from my friend's house who, by the way, lives in an amazing new build house. Um, her house is so fresh and clean and finished and done. Literally the only thing that she has to do is decorate and it's then, then finished. In comparison to our house, which I realise is you know we've made it a lot better than it was and like our house was absolutely fine and it was livable before it just wasn't um it wasn't set up for like family living like we had a really really small kitchen like our kitchen finished literally here this was our entire kitchen this area like it everything had like cupboards so there was just like a little tiny bit of floor space and you can imagine with the kids cooking and all that kind of stuff i know that that's the case for some people when they've got smaller kitchens as well like just bog standard houses in the uk like kitchens are generally quite small so we opened it up and we like smashed through this wall which went into the what was like the dining room living room and the wall there that you can see this wall never used to exist this used to go through to the living room and then this wall used to be up here so the kitchen was tiny but the living room living room diner i guess was like larger and it had all carpet through it and stuff and you can just imagine again carpet food kids not ideal and look we did it ourselves we did it on a budget we did it uh, diy and we you know there are things that are just completely not finished like there are lots of things in the kitchen that aren't finished there are lots of things well the bathroom's like half done you can still see underneath all of the like everything works but you can still see all the pipe work you can still like there's no panel on the bath the bath's kind of like it's not boxed in properly so over the edge it's just like it just drops and there's like um you can see like underneath where all the piping is and stuff there's lots of like oh gosh there's just lots of finishing off drops basically um and it's all stuff that we are not terribly enthused about doing right now especially with the kids when it's just us which is never but when it was just us like we could just crack on and do those jobs um, and we used to really enjoy it and we used to get like a little kick out of it but just uh, our time is so limited now and time is very precious and we want to spend it with the kids and like doing stuff and going on days out and not stressing about what needs doing in the house and if we don't do it now then when are we going to do it etc etc like there's always a job and it feels like especially for ash who works full time he works really long hours he doesn't have an evening basically because by the time the kids get to sleep it's we're, we're we're so tired by the time the kids get to sleep like he's not about to start doing diy and frankly a lot of the diy that he needs to do like requires sawing things and drilling things and it's just too loud and it's just not going to happen and then it's saturdays and sundays it's family time you know so it's just it's just tricky but Anyway, this weekend he did actually do some DIY. He did some flooring on the landing upstairs. I can't remember if I've shown you, but I've probably mentioned it. The landing upstairs was carpet. And when he redid the bathroom, or at least started redoing the bathroom back in like April, he accidentally knocked over like some black sludge that was from a radiator that he bled. Um, the inside the radiator was like this black sludge that went all over the carpet. We couldn't get it out forever. Um, and so he refloored upstairs with the leftover flooring from the bathroom. Um, he's done that so he did that this weekend it's not finished of course like the floor itself is done and the thresholds are done but there's like the finishing off like the trim and everything all around the edges we'll still need doing and that's just just again like that won't happen for months like i, I know it won't i know it won't and that is not anything against Ash. it's just life like just it's just too busy and there's always a different priority and yeah, like we're going away this weekend. Like there's no way, there is no way that it's gonna get done. Like I, I can tell you that for free. Anyway, so with the plan for looking at new builds and stuff, we actually went to look at some 
actual new builds, like not just the show homes that I went to look at last week. I, we actually went to look together um, at some new builds to see to see what our actual options are, because the show homes are show homes, right? They're not actually, well, these ones that certainly weren't for sale, and if I'm totally honest, they weren't within our price range either. So it, it was kind of pointless us looking at those and thinking that would be what we could actually achieve. And anyway, we went to look at these houses and the two the two or three houses that we looked at that were within our price range were so small um the rooms were i'd say slightly bigger than ours but the general feel of the house was smaller like you walk in the entranceway one of them was literally just that like that was it and then it was stairs and then you go into a living room like there was no hallway and again with two young kids walking into a hallway and like you're gonna have bags you're gonna have stuff you're gonna have buggies you're gonna have two kids like at your feet or in your arms like you need a bigger hallway than that and it was just way it felt very claustrophobic on entrance as soon as you get into the house it was bigger the houses we looked at were red row houses and they're one of the better i think just based on a lot of your feedback from my last video and on the reel I did, talking about the same thing, talking about new builds, a lot of your feedback was saying that Red Row are one of the better builders and developers. Um, so that was, yeah, that was kind of eye-opening to be honest, going to see those houses, the ones that actually are within our budget. Because although the show homes were gorgeous, we couldn't afford them. Like, and we're not gonna go into insane debt just to have a crisp, perfect, new build house that don't get me wrong would be the dream if we could afford one of those bigger ones but we can't right now so our realistic plan is to try and make this space work for us as best as possible and what i mean by that is like we have a lot of space we have a lot of storage we just don't use it very well because kids genuinely that is why like i'm my mental load is so like bogged down with everything else that i just don't feel like I have the mental capacity to even think about like how I would organize things, what storage solutions would work for us to make my daily life a bit easier. Because if I'm honest, like I genuinely think like my mental load is not helped every time I go into a cupboard in this house. Because I don't know where anything is, nothing has a space, nothing is ever in the space that I thought it was gonna go in. And it, things could go in like, like 10 different cupboards before I find it. Like it just is stressful and it's such, a small problem but it builds up over time and it's just got to a point where I really just want to start again um, and so we've got the office space at the back of the garden which is over here the garden the, the windows are really dirty sorry just out there that is our little office um well garage it's a converted garage basically the previous owners converted it I think they used to like maybe have a band or something because there was like all soundproofing in there maybe they used to record in there don't know um, but they convert the garage and it's at the back of the garden and we basically, as, when we moved in we originally thought it was going to be like a really cool office, like me to work from home and Ash to, he loves gaming and whatever. He has like a billion hobbies by the way and he has like the stuff to show for it, like wow. Anyway, we thought it was going to be that kind of space but it's turned into a dumping ground. It's also a leaking, it's also therefore been mouldy because we haven't even been in there in like six months. We just go in there, chuck stuff in and then like leave and it's just all built up and it's just been crazy so oh, we're gonna tackle that first and get that properly sorted out in terms of being a, a genuinely good like storage solution oh god i've burnt these great i'm gonna start again anyway what was i saying yeah we're gonna get some decent shelves and stuff in there like proper garage shelves get all of our like boxes and stuff properly put away labelled up so we know where everything is and then get a lot of the stuff that are in these cupboards into the garage because they don't need to be in the in here and they just clog up so much space under here is literally full of got the tumble dryer at the bottom and then all at the top there's just like loads of like diy stuff that we just don't need access to all the time there's like 10 different corks loads of screws and bolts and like just I honestly couldn't even tell you what half the stuff is. Oh yeah, like paint rollers, things like that. I just, I, I just don't even know at this point. There's a saw on top of there. Like, I just don't want it in the house. It's stressful, it's cluttering. I could use that space for the kids' arts and crafts stuff. Things that I want access to, like, all the time. Um, and then, yeah, we can just have the DIY stuff in there. That would be my ideal situation. We just haven't, like, used that storage 
effectively enough and that's why i feel like inside feels so cluttered basically i just want to get to the point where we're happy with the house because although the main gripe for me isn't the inside of the house i quite like this house i would invest more money in this house if i thought it could be for our forever home the biggest thing is like i said in the last video is the lack of parking and with the kids it is just really really hard um and with the shopping and it's just stressful because like so for example today i did my click and collect shopping i've got my four big bag for life bags and hallie how am i doing that like i had to get all of the bags out of the car get hallie out of the car i had all the bags laid out into outside my car locked my car picked up two bags one over my shoulder one in my arm carrying hallie really like waddling to the to the door took me ages put the bags down Hallie's still in my arms go back to the car get the other two bags and it's just a mission i know what you're probably going to say don't do click and collect do delivery but delivery drivers literally cannot get down here like it's not exactly accessible there's barely any parking anyway lorries or vans can't really get down here and again they would have to do the same journey that i would do plus then we've got molly who doesn't really do well with visitors or people coming to the door it would probably be more stressful like molly barking and hallie like crying probably needing to be carried and me trying to get bags in and out or like trying to get all the shopping and that it'd probably be more stressful than going to the shop so it's just you know you know <laughs> it's just i'm trying to be glass half full but i find it really hard sometimes especially when yeah just the logistics of where the house is placed if we could do something about that then that would be amazing but um yeah we can't Anyway, I think realistically, unless we can pull out another £100,000 out of thinner, I think we'll probably stay in put for a little while. Um, and then we will probably reevaluate in a year's time. Like, I think we know what our affordability is now and what we could get for that money right now um, isn't dream home territory. And I think, I think we're really reluctant to move again and then move again, like to get the dream home scenario. So I think we really, really, really would like to be in a position where the next house that we move into is the house that we stay in for 10, 15 years. Like, we, we would love that. And we'd love a drive and a garage at the front and everything to be, like, in proportion and hopefully not to have to knock any walls down or do a lot of work ourselves. Just because that, I'm not gonna lie, that kind of stuff has taken its toll on us um, as a family. Like, it's just really difficult with two kids when, like, if Ash is doing it himself, basically, which realistically would probably be our only option. Um, in terms of like financially and he's really good at it and he knows what to do um so we'd probably begrudge like paying someone three times as much um to do it but it's just one of those like it's very time consuming very stressful very messy very dangerous to the kids like i just i just really don't want to do any more big projects basically anyway that's my little update we're probably gonna stay put for about a year and hopefully yeah save up enough money and just hope for the best in terms of finding a house that doesn't require a lot of work and that suits our needs within our budget how hard can that be yeah that's without even talking about interest rates like our interest rate on our mortgage is going up because we are one of the very unlucky uh people groups of people whose mortgage um just so happens to be ending right now when mortgage rates are ridiculously high so that means our mortgages are like 5% now. So we've got two separate mortgages, like one from our old house that we ported over to this house, um, and then a separate one, which was an additional loan that we got for this house. Um, yeah, they're both at like 5% now, it, which is mad. It's so high. Um, so, like again, realistically, if we're being completely honest, um, it's financially not the right choice to to move house right now. Anyway, I can just hear Hallie getting up. Pancakes are almost ready. I've got these ones and some more going. So yeah, I'm gonna give her those. I'm gonna sort something else for her, maybe some cucumber sticks or something. And I will catch up with you after. later now um but ash got back from work early and it's time for me to go and get george from nursery but it meant that i could actually put hallie down for her second nap because normally when she's due her second nap it's when i go and pick george up from nursery so it's always basically she always misses it and she's always so overtired when it gets to 
bedtime because she doesn't nap in the car. It's not long enough. She's hearing and fretting. By the time we get home from nursery, it's like half past four. Like by the time we've probably gone to a shop or potted about and stuff because we never just come straight home because, you know, George wants to do other things and whatever. By the time we get home, it's like half past four on its dinner time, basically. So I don't put her down for her nap. And even if I did put her down, she'd be like screaming, crying. And it would just be awful. And it's just chaotic. So we just power through dinner time normally. And she doesn't get her second nap. And I don't know whether she's in the transition of going from two naps to one nap yet. Because she's only 12 months. And I'm pretty sure like babies don't generally transition down to one nap until like 13, 14, 15 months. Like, I think from memory i should probably research that but yeah because ash is at home we've actually been able to put her down for a second nap at the right time i can go get george on my own me and george will pop to the shop or something it's so much easier when we haven't got to honestly i don't know what it is i've said it before and i'll say it again when you have two kids and you actually are only with one child it feels like you have no kids like it's so much easier with just the one once you've experienced it with two. I can't even imagine what it's like if you've got three or four or five, like, girls. Like, I don't know how you do it, honestly. <laughs> Not to mention, oh my gosh, when you're in the car and there are no children, although it's only gonna be for five minutes, the car seats are empty, I'm gonna put on one song, full pelt, no one's gonna complain, no one's gonna cry. And I can get a little bit of me time, even if it is for five minutes. Anyway, see you later. Did you wear your socks and sliders all day? Yeah. Did you? Yeah. Why didn't you wear your trainers? Those trainers. The trainers that I bought, that you wore to nursery this morning. Because I don't like them. Okay. Do you want to walk a little bit quicker, darling? No. No? Okay. We'll walk slowly then. Oh, you're on the table. No, no. We're not sitting on the table. Oh, good morning, guys. It's the next day. It's six in the morning. Um, George got up waving an ice cream in my face because he'd come downstairs and he'd got on a chair and gone into the freezer, the top shelf of the freezer, high freezer, uh, and got himself an ice cream, but he couldn't open it. So he came, literally smacked me in the face with it and was like, mummy, open this ice cream for me, please. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> morning to you too. Yes, yeah, stair gates do not deter that child. Um, I need to go and sort my life out in a minute, but um, I thought we could do George's little routine together. Is that a good idea, George? We're gonna redo George's routine that we've been doing recently. I can't remember if I've shown you this since I've done it, but last week I went to Hobbycraft and I bought some hook and loop tape, so the Velcro little patches um, and this whiteboard pin board thing, as well as a lot of pom pom. Did you hide that in the cupboard? I don't want an ice cream, it's the morning time, George. Please, Mom, listen, please, please stop getting onto the chair and getting onto that. Did you put that in the cupboard? Yeah. Um, okay, right, George. I got it in there, Daddy. Can you please put That's that back? Really... Can you yeah. please put that back? No, no. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, thank you. <coughs> I don't even know why it's there. George, listen. George, come here, we're going to do your routine. We're also doing a little pom-pom jar reward system. So every time he's a good boy, he hasn't screamed this morning, which I know the bar is the, where the bar is. Like, <laughs> if he has good behaviour, follows the house rules, then we pop a pom-pom into the jar. If he's doing something nice, if he's playing nicely with Hallie, if I notice him doing something, pop the pom-poms in there. And when he gets to the top here, he gets a surprise, which I'll also stuck on with the little hook and loop tape. It's working really well and it's very much keeping him motivated, which is good. We've just shot that in like a vase that we had. These are all the resources that the health is to gave us. So we're going to use them to make a little routine for the day, aren't we? No bashing and no and no screaming and no biting and no chuck. Yes, kind words. Yes, kind hands. Um, yeah, yeah, coffee, yeah, yeah, and well done. Wake up, we have our breakfast. Yeah, we did. After that, we're gonna brush our teeth. Yeah. And get dressed. Yeah. Go to the toilet. Yeah. Get in the car. <laughs> and go to nursery. Here we go, well done. And then it's home time. I need to know. Not after that. Yeah. Yeah. 
after you have your lunch, you're going to have home time. But and then you go to car? No, it goes like this, look. Breakfast all the way down. And then car all the way down. And then home time all the way down. It goes like this. One, two, three. When you get to here, you go all the way up to the top again. You love this camera, don't you? <laughs> Run. Hallie's just having her breakfast because she just had her bottle before we left. And I'm back and having your breakfast. Yes, we are. Please don't throw that on the floor. The <laughs> thing is, when Molly's here, she like literally sits underneath the, anyone that's got a dog and a baby, like, you'll know the drill. Dog sits under the high chair, waits for baby to drop things, but then gets the baby collects clued up enough to then start feeding the dog constantly. So I'm like, I don't even know how much she's ate and how much she hasn't ate, but. She got a banana and a pancake, one of the pancakes I made yesterday for her. And there's only two left now anyway. <laughs> anyway, this morning was like the smoothest morning we've had in a long time. Yes, George woke up before I did, came downstairs and got an ice cream out of the freezer and asked me to open it for him by slapping me in the face. However, believe it or not, that's a very, very, very calm morning for us. George didn't scream at me once. He did not scream at me and I know like for a lot of people that won't be like this big, they'd be like, well, yeah, your kid shouldn't really scream at you. Yeah, like that's our reality most of the time. And the fact that um, he didn't, it just puts me in such a good mood in the morning. Like we've had a really nice morning. Like I said, you know, I'm gonna give me a minute. I need to go to the toilet or give me a second. I need to brush my teeth or I need to help Hallie. And he goes, okay. Like that is a revolutionary for George. Like the fact that he's able to listen and be a little bit patient and not literally go from zero to 100, like flip out meltdown mode straight away. It's genuinely like, a it's a really big deal for us. Um, so yeah, he's got a couple of pom-poms in his pom-pom chart this morning for being really good. Um, he was helping with Hallie and stuff. I asked him to get a nappy and he got it for me. Sometimes, sometimes I try and get him involved in things like, like just general little routine of like helping Hallie or sorting breakfast and stuff. Sometimes he loves it and gets really involved. Yeah, really? Sometimes he loves it, gets really involved, and then other times he just hates it and it like antagonizes him even more. But yeah, I don't know. We are still going pretty strong with the no screen time in the week. So Monday to Thursday, no screen time, no TV in the morning, nothing, because we find that it just works easier for getting to and from nursery and it's just it's just a little bit better for us. He also it like pumps him up. Alright, hello. It like pumps him up. She doesn't necessarily need help. So. Are you shouting at me? <laughs> yeah. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, he is allowed to watch a little bit of telly, um, like an hour a day or something like that. Um, and that seems to be going okay. Like I feel like it's a good balance rather than saying no screen time ever and never cutting ourselves a break to like get ready or do stuff and like, you know, you know what it's like. Screen time is helpful, but some kids also don't handle it very well, so. Little lady wants my attention so i think what i'm gonna do guys is finish off the vlog here thank you so much for watching but i'm gonna love you baby and give you a little bit of attention yeah yeah okay right i'll see you later guys bye because you glue all the pieces back together yeah you you take all my wrongs and make them better yeah you you're making me want to try forever I feel so free, oh my sweet baby